As I grew up with the modern dance, the Martha Graham, Jose Limon, Louis Horst, Doris Humphrey, all of that, that was the academy when I was studying. I hadn't come to Merce Cunningham yet, although Cunningham for me kind of bridged between ballet and th this amazing way that he kind of warped ballet. is a big question. For periods of time I've performed a lot and I usually am trying to construct something that I would like to see that I don't find enough on Western concert dance stages. So that has given me some instructions of what I would like to present or show to a public. And by nature, because my work is, is quite small, actually intimate. An intimate setting, people being closer is, I favor that because I, I think that's important to experience. So I'm making things that I would like to see because I don't see enough of them. If everybody was doing what I'm doing, I would have absolutely no need. And also I'm interested in movement. I usually am preparing something that will connect me with the, the world of movement that comes from my daily life, although I, I'm not practicing pedestrian movement. And uh, making a frame for it so that people can look at it with curiosity and perhaps feel something moving in themselves. In the last maybe 10, 15 years, I've been more interested in almost uh, the between a demonstration and a performance. The, the tuning scores are a format that I think of as performance, whether anybody else is there. The people who are participating are both observers and actors in the scene. And it's of concern to me that when we do open the observatory to other people, that there are enough instructions in what's happening that they can participate in their own editing mind to show something about the choices a dancer is making, to show something, not to write it and analyze it as a description, but to point out the moments of decision and communication. That's what I've been doing more. It, the other night I was here in Seski, I was doing a rare solo performance and I was returning to a, a score that I had made in 1982 that I practiced for many years as performance, maybe only until 86, but many years, but I haven't practiced since then. So it was an experiment for me and also for all the years in between exploring these opening up or reverse engineering, I often say, my dancing into component uh, 
activities to see what would happen if I revisited that with this very different body than back then. And also in that evening I quickly invited colleagues that I knew were there but without much preparation, we kind of jumped into it to look at another level of how composition arises, how it arises in our perception, the viewer's perception. This is quite a different uh, question than about uh, the gaze, the observer's gaze. not really looking at that area of psychology. I'm trying to look beneath it at our animal nature and what it is that we choose from what we see to make sense out of it. And I'm using devices of eyes closed so that this space is not organized by design, by composition that we call design, choices that come from already a cultural organization. And then when the eyes are closed, all those designs are there, but you can't just uh, step on those lines. It shows something much more organic about design and how it arises. Who are looking at it, rather than that it's there already. That's important uh, to me. And maybe it's a classic kind of constructivist philosophy that Whatever's here, we have to build. Each of us has to rebuild the floor, the walls, the other humans. You're not here unless I'm looking at you, in other words. Yeah. And it's the same for the dance. It doesn't exist, really, until I'm looking as the dancer. Without my internal observation, uh, it's a different a different activity. I don't know what it is, a spiritual expression. For very many years, I've lived on in the same farm in the mountains of Vermont. 1975 till now. And I also before lived in the countryside about eight years previous. I never really thought of having a career. Coming from New York, being with, you know, the New York scene growing up in it, somehow it didn't make me want to follow that path. I didn't know that my choice to live in the countryside, whether I could stay dancing. But by great luck, I did. But my year has always been mixed. I grow food, so I'm always home in the growing season, which with global warming now starts in May and ends at the end of October. So for about six months, I don't leave the farm where I live. And my activity is to grow food. I built a studio only 20 years ago, so I had been there for a long time without a studio. In the rest of the year, I traveled. I would like to have thought I was traveling to uh, perform and make things, but in actuality, and economics, I, I had to teach. So I've been traveling overseas to teach either Europe or Australia or now, thank goodness, more and more in South America. Different parts of the world where I could teach the way I wanted to teach, which I can't do in America. And that's longer workshops um, where I can really collaborate with the people who come to the workshop.
and hopefully combined with performance so there's some example of what that thinking in the workshops, one expression of what the workshop studies the research can bring. I articulated this in my head when I was much younger that I wanted a life, I didn't want a career, and somehow it, it, it worked out in some ways like that. I built the studio with Steve Paxton, we built it together. And we don't really teach there at all. We bring friends, we bring colleagues. They can work in the studio or not in the summer because we don't want to be indoors in the summer.